and clear your clutter inside and out. We're talking about if you're Ben Affleck. Do you delight when others fail? Have your behaviors and actions helped or hurt someone? Are you the mindset that justice has been done when another has misfortune? Learn how to support one another as we finish up our month focusing on We Are One. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired by Ben Affleck. I don't know Ben Affleck. The title comes from a funny video ages ago. I want to say probably 90s, early 90s, maybe 90s sometime. Jimmy Kimmel, Matt Damon, and Sarah Silverman did that funny video. And I think that that was the title of it, or maybe it was reversed with Matt Damon. Anyway, today's episode was inspired by Ben Affleck. Don't know him, although... A curious note, a six degrees of separation is really true. His ex-wife is from West Virginia, and West Virginia is not a big state, so I'm guessing we could find three leaves between myself and his ex-wife, although I have no desire to do that or time. But just one of those interesting things when you see people break out the six degrees of separation. Anyway, today's episode was inspired because in my news feed, he showed up. And it was about him failing in sobriety on Halloween. I was bothered by that because that's not news to me. Celebrating, because some people did. I mean, why else? I mean, we're curious. It's gossip. Some people do celebrate when others are falling down. I've had the good fortune to never be addicted to anything. You know, if you've listen to a long time or watch, you know, I've talked about my emotional eating, which is continually getting better, but I've never been addicted to drugs or alcohol. And I think that's an incredible journey to undertake. And and I can't even imagine, because if you do that, you're doing that to hide your pain. Eating is to hide my pain or to stuff my emotion. So it's the same thing with that. I also think that from what I've read, there are your predisposition. If you have something that runs in your family, your body also would go through withdrawal. So there's a physical addiction in addition to an emotional crutch, all that going on. And so I can't even imagine what that journey would be like. And so when I saw that news, and then it was, I saw it continuously for a while. I thought, talk about hitting someone when they're down. Now, you know, there are celebrities out there that want their picture taken every second. They will do things to stay in the limelight. I think kids are off limit. I think politicians' kids are off limits. They get a free pass until, free pass might not be the right word if they commit a crime. Obviously, I think they should be punished, but the media should leave them alone until they're 21 or 18, you know, some line there when they're adult. And I would say if you have the opportunity to go to college, 21 and on, but you know, we all do stupid stuff. At least I did. I didn't do anything incredibly stupid. But I can't imagine trying to recover from an addiction and have people constantly taking photographs of me, constantly posing my every step, posing and sharing my failure. I was at a business recently, and I've only had this happen, and I hope the woman didn't see me because I I would have felt horrible. I went to a business, and this woman goes to check me out, and my guess is that she is or was addicted to meth and is in sobriety. But her face had been, you know, because you saw in the 90s, you used to show people before and after meth. Might be heroin. It's something hard. Anyway, her face was ravished. That's the best way. And I kind of instinctually flinched a little bit. And just so you don't think I'm a snob, the only other time I did that was when I was living in Los Angeles and did a big charity event, charity event for really wealthy women 
And this woman had had so much plastic surgery done. I did that had the same response. And I thought, where was your family and your friends saying you need to stop? Because that is obviously what happened. It just was heartbreaking. So underneath any addiction, obviously, is hurt. And I was thinking about this, and I thought, with all the advantages Ben Affleck has, because he's got money, so he can hire a sobriety coach to have someone with him 24-7. He can go to, you know, these addiction centers, treatment centers that are, you know, $30,000, $35,000 a month and even more. And that's what some people don't even earn in a year. Has a lot of support. He has all the advantages, whereas the woman I saw probably is in a county or state program, if she's lucky, if there's a room available. I mean, in a small town and kind of the country area, she has a lot stacked up against her. But the one advantage she has over Ben Affleck is she is not living in a fishbowl. She is not being subject to people taking her picture all the time, yelling things at her and sharing her business to the entire world. I can't imagine what that would be like. I, I just have no concept of, of how that would be. And so seeing what I felt, and what I did this time is I got very smart and I went on YouTube and found a click on how to pronounce it. Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. And so Ben Affleck inspired today's episode because I just feel that some people definitely take delight in that. There are people camping out. They want to catch him not sober so they can share that news with the world. Schadenfreude. Is the pleasure derived by someone from another person's misfortune? And then I found a saying by the Japanese when I was doing some research, this, the misfortunes of others taste like honey. I'm sure if I did more research and had more time that probably every language has something very similar. But, you know, German, I'm German, like that kind of Schadenfreude, you know, get that German kind of, I think, sums it up really well. But it's about taking pleasure when others fail. Why do we delight in the misfortune of others? And perhaps delight isn't always the best word, but think about it when you've maybe seen something and been like, yeah, about time. Hmm, that's justice. That's fair. So it might not be this complete, like, joyous sense. Sometimes people make it really easy for us, right? When people are cruel and something happens to them, you can understand why you're like, oh, I'm feeling pretty good today because they finally what got what was due to them. And you're human. It's completely understandable how you'd have that reaction. So one of the reasons is we think they deserve their misfortune. We lack the power to have justice served. We lack the power to make things happen for people. And so we think, huh, the universe took care of it. Karma. They finally got their just desserts. So if we think that someone deserves it, you can understand why we'd kind of get some pleasure from it, right? Wow, they're a really horrible person. It's about time. Or we think justice has been done. I talked in another episode about someone that I think's running a con they get caught and get thrown in jail, to me, that's justice and done. I don't know if I'd, delight might be too strong of a word. I just would guess that I'd say, okay, that's fair. Justice would be done. I don't see myself going, whoa, ha, 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 and ha, 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 and delighting in it all. So we think that someone might deserve, get what they deserve, or that justice has been done. You know, I'm going to be honest, this whole Jeffrey Epstein scandal has disheartened me. How this guy was for years allowed to be a terror and how he cut a deal with the DA down in Miami or whatever it was and what a joke it was, his prison sentence. People knew about it and I believe there is a big wide circle of his friends and I am hoping that it all comes to the surface and if they get thrown in jail, justice will be done. 
And to me, nothing, I'm not going to take delight in it because so many people had to suffer. But in that case, justice will be done. You committed a heinous crime. Many people looked the other way for years while young girls suffered. You may take a little delight because it helps you realize that you're doing pretty well. Hey, I'm not like Ben Affleck. I might not have as much money, but at least I'm not an alcoholic. Or I might be struggling, but at least I'm not in jail. Right? And that kind of gives you the perspective of, ah, I'm better than them. Right? And gives you that temporary ego boost. Although stuff like that doesn't last long. Kind of like the donut for me. It feels good sometimes right when I eat it, but oh, I feel that Krispy Kreme later down the road. Or if it's something minor, just might think, oh, that's okay. You know, it was just a minor misfortune that happened to them. They were outed publicly for something and, you know, it'll pass in five minutes when the next big thing or news happens. So it's really, it's okay. It's not a big deal in the scheme of things, so it's okay to, to take pleasure that this happened to them, right? Justifying it. Maybe you're envious. You know what? He has a ton of money, so good. I'm glad we knocked him down a peg off his high horse. He deserved it. Let's take him down a notch. Because you desire what they have and don't have it, and so that maybe evens the playing field a little bit in your mind. I've done a podcast on jealousy. I encourage you to check that out. His jealousy is an opportunity to heal. And again, it might make you feel better about yourself. Wow, I'm going through a really tough time, but at least I'm not addicted to drugs. I don't have a lot of money, but I didn't steal. Whatever it is. You simply might have low self-esteem. And if you have low self-esteem, then something like this is going to give you that little up, that little boost of, oh, I'll feel better about myself because look at what others are doing. At least I'm not that way. I'm better. But that's a false way to prop yourself up, right? Because it's like that donut I mentioned a moment ago. It's something that's not going to last. It's not going to keep you lifted. It's not going to ultimately improve your self-esteem. And then finally, something to think about. If you really are happy when others have th- bad things happen to them, you might be depressed. And that might be something that you want to check out because you might be coming from the perspective of you, everyone else wins but me. And that's really masking your depression. You know, clutter causes a depression and depression causes clutter. So I encourage you, if you do this a lot, check in with yourself and see if you're depressed. And it might be a situation where you need professional help. So I encourage you to get that. Now, for the rest of us, we're human and we're going to do it every so often. And I would say, If you do it a lot, again, it could be depression, but it might be one of the other things I mentioned. So that is an opportunity for self-examination. What is it? And I fall into this category. I would think justice has been done. Well, why is having justice so important to me? What's that really about? It's about right and wrong. Okay, well, right and wrong. But let's take it a little bit deeper in that. Why is it so important to me? You know, if I step back from my spiritual practice, I don't believe in duality. There is no right or wrong. Again, that's a whole other episode. But maybe it's said that I feel cheated or that I, when I take it down even further, oh, maybe I don't feel good enough. Maybe I don't feel like I deserve all the good things that person is. So remember, we have layers, but it's an opportunity for you to, to heal. That's how I look at everything. You have all the answers you need within. Got Clutter, 365 journal prompts books, supports you in figuring out how to clear your clutter. Get control of your clutter so your clutter doesn't control you. Reclaim time, 
money, sanity, and resources. Choose from physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, holidays, or compilation volumes one, two, and three. Free MP3 meditation with purchase. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com or purchase on Amazon. How do you stop? Easier said than done, right? With most of the challenges in life. And I just want to take a moment to congratulate all of you listening and watching because you're doing the work. Being spiritual, yes, yoga, prayer, all that stuff is good. But when we're talking about things like this is a hard stuff, this is a challenging stuff, but this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you really walk the talk. And anyone I've talked to who's on this journey, Night of the Dark Soul, I don't, you know, things like that. You really you have to get through the uncomfortable stuff. You have to challenge yourself. You have to deal with the muck, things that aren't so great. So if you're doing that, instead of like glossing over or doing no self-examination, I applaud you. Because as you do that, you support yourself, your community, and ultimately the world. So keep with it. How to stop. Be aware of when you're taking joy in someone else's misfortune. If it's a regular habit for you, you just might not notice. You might be on autopilot. So as you're skimming through things, and I've done an episode on gossip, and I'll probably do another one, but that's a really good time to check in. Do you get People Magazine because you want to read about the struggles of others? Are you looking at those hardcore gossip sites that share all the secrets about celebrities because you want to feel better about yourself. So really tune in and check in. Do you take pleasure when someone else is suffering? Focus on the good about the person or all that they've done to be successful. When doing this, we're trying to find that empathy, to find that connection, right? This whole month is about we are one and the oneness and how we connect as humans. Even if it's someone you are jealous of, how can you say, you know what, I'm really jealous of Susie, but here are some really good qualities. And she's worked really hard. If I sit back and think about it, she wasn't an overnight success. She spent five years doing things and then something finally hit. And she volunteers, she donates her time. So look for the good in that person, wanting to get you back to that connection to remember, because we're not all black and white. Even people that aren't good, if we sit and take the time, we'd say, okay, you know what? I can find something good about. I think Jeffrey Epstein was definitely a pedophile. And he also donated a lot of money. Now that's a whole other ball of wax for how he became wealthy, but he gave money to many causes. So that's a good thing. He was a philanthropist. I mean, he had a bazillion homes and all that, but he could have been even more greedy. So he donated a lot of money. So that would be the one good thing that I could say about someone that I would be really challenged. So if I can find something challenging about someone that I don't have a lot of respect for, who can you find it out? Bring it back to you. What do you need to change or improve? If you're jealous of someone, what can you do to flip that switch? And again, recognizing what they've done, what they've accomplished. And if you're jealous, how can that support you? When we focus all our time on worrying about others, you know, that's easy because that serves as a distraction. Oh, out here, blah, 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 blah. Then I don't have to do any self-examination when I'm worrying about everyone else in the world. When I'm sitting in judgment, when I'm sitting in self-righteousness, then you know what? I don't have to do any self-examination. So I encourage you, use that as an opportunity. And if you're someone that does this a lot, that's a great cue. That's a great way to break the autopilot when you find yourself, boom, okay, what do I need to work on? What's this really about? And have that to help be the moment to help you stop. Figure ways you can bolster your self-esteem. I say this a lot. 
you are good enough, you are worthy, and you are loved no matter what. I believe that because I believe the essence of our soul, that that is truly how it is. I believe we choose to do things and experiences each lifetime, and that we're all kind of in this part of this play. So how can you bolster your self-esteem? What can you do to feel better about yourself? Because that's an inside job. No one else can do that for you. It's like when I'm coaching or when I wrote the books, here's the guidance, but only you can take that first step. I can't force anyone to do that. Only you can take them action to change your life. So think about what you could do to improve your self-esteem. I want you right now, if you're struggling with this, write a list of all the things you love about yourself. I want you to also write on that list all the awesome things you've done. And if you're struggling, ask your friends or family, people that are non-judgmental and will support you. Use others' success as a way to motivate you. She is a really successful movie producer. How can this motivate me? Wow, well, she's a woman in the industry. That's really hard. If she did it, then I can too. Maybe I can reach out to her and maybe she'll respond. Use that as a tool for you. Because if you just are bitter about other success, that doesn't help you. That just keeps you stuck. You can accomplish more than you give yourself credit for. I really believe that. I believe we all sell ourselves way too short. Check in with your mental health. If there is a deeper issue like depression going on, if your self-esteem, you aren't able to improve that on your own, that's something that you might need professional help with. That's why I'm passionate about clearing clutter because I see the correlation. I mentioned it earlier. Depression causes clutter and clutter can cause depression. There is no shame to ask for support. I've done it throughout my life and I am grateful for the people that have supported me. There were times I just couldn't help myself. I didn't know how to, I was stuck. How do I get out? How do I do this? Like my brother's saying to me, you see yourself as a victim. Wow, that's right. Wow, he's really right. Let me think about this. Okay, I think that it's true, but what do I do now? I don't, I don't know. And so I got support. Don't read or purchase magazines that gossip about celebrity. I mean, that's an easy way because I think probably in every issue of people, because I used to read people to the doctor's office, there's usually something that's not so great that's going on. So just leave those be. Don't check out the crappy gossip sites. I said years ago, I went on a retreat and we weren't supposed to be on our computers. We're like, I have to check my work email. That's one of the things about a solopreneur, but that was all I do. But I used to listen to Tony works a swing shift. I'd read these, the sites because it would be my that temporary donut of feeling better about myself you know i'm not the crazy housewife and then i was like okay this is a perfect opportunity you are on a retreat for seven days you're only allowed to check your email so don't waste any more time and i don't go to the sites anymore lend a hand and provide positive feedback wouldn't you want someone to help you if you were down See, this is a oneness and community and supporting one another. When you start to feel that, aha, uh -huh, yay, 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 then lend the hand. How can I, hey man, I heard what happened. I had a situation here where I was briefly in an organization that just wasn't for me and I, I just didn't fit in. It was a woman's organization and I, it just was not a good match for me and I, I had done it in Pasadena anyway. The woman who was my leader for the first year had, her husband had been drunk driving and, and killed someone. And my immediate thought based on the couple years I was in that group is I can see those women ditching her in a hot minute. And so I wrote her a note and I just said, I'm thinking about you. I'm sorry that you and your family experienced this because she had kids, other things going on. And I appreciated the time that you were nice to me in this group. And if there's anything I can do for you, please let me know. Please know that I'm thinking about you. Never heard from her. And, and that was okay. 
I, I didn't expect to, we weren't close, but I believe in that moment that supported her, that she probably felt very alone and even someone reaching out and letting her know she wasn't alone made a difference. So how can you lend a hand when someone's down? And cultivate your empathy. How would you feel if it was you? I mean, I can't imagine everyone knowing my business and knowing that I'm trying to be sober and I failed on Halloween and there are drunken pictures of me. I, I just can't even, and again, like, you know, I crack up. My parents are people, if I sometimes will say a celebrity, they have no idea who that is. And I think, oh, that is so awesome. And I have to figure out again, like, how is this stuff showing up in my feed? I don't watch news. I'll read news on the iPad. And that's something I have to figure out how to be better with. So cultivate your empathy. You know it wouldn't feel good if it were you. How can you reach out? When we cultivate that empathy, that's going to remind us and connect us to that feeling of oneness. And again, that was my hope this month that we kind of got how we all are one. We're all part of the same energy and how are we going to lift all of us, each one of us up instead of bring us down. Take actions from today's podcast. Recognize where you have or currently are delighting in others' failures or misfortunes. Examine why you found pleasure in others' downfall. Lend a hand to someone down on their luck. Examine how you could do better in your own life. Celebrate another's success. Empathize with someone's misfortune. Next month, we're talking about hope. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.